everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am going to be finishing my 1883 bustle dress. And I say that because I am actually recording this after I have finished almost every single element that is left to do on this. Hence why it just looks like kind of a mess behind me so that you don't get to see any of it yet. So basically I have I think three things that were left to do in this video. One of them was to put the red band across the front of the overskirt, that bias diagonal band, which is this one right here. And two, I have to put the trim on the neckline and the cuffs. And three, I have to do the entire like neckline dicky bib etc type piece that goes in and fills in the neckline. And as I said, I have actually already done most of that, but I'm going to take you back in time two days ago to when I was finishing all of that stuff and we are going to start working on that. If you are hearing booms going on, it is because I went to go edit this video or part of this video and realized I hadn't done the intro and it's actually New Year's Eve right now and in my area, New Year's Eve fireworks last for five plus hours. So that's what's going on right now at 10 30 p.m. But anyway let's go back two days ago to finishing all of those things and then I will be back here in just you know a little bit later in the video to catch you back up with where I actually am at this moment in the process so I will see you shortly. Oh and of course if you haven't seen all of the rest of the parts of this video and you want to get caught up before you get into this new stuff all of it is linked down below in the description and I'll put a playlist right up here as well. Okay, now back to two days ago. So for this trim to be so textural, I think what we're looking at is two different types of fabric. So I've got some silk organza here as well as cotton organdy. And I think what I'm actually going to try is to take a strip of the organdy and a slightly wider strip of the organza and basically create a sort of tube that I'm going to gather up and then potentially like tack down in places from the top to give it just even more texture so it's not like an even gathering. I think that might work because as tempting as this is to say, oh yeah, it's feathers or, oh, let's go for fur trim, make it extra Christmassy. I just feel like it has that ruched up kind of texture that you can kind of almost see even when I'm just scrunching these two up together. And so I think that's gonna be the best things to try. Best of all, it's from the stash. Okay, well, here's my test piece. I feel like it does look basically like what's in the fashion plate. But at the same time, it also kind of looks like garbage. And I'm not sure how to fix that. But basically all I did was this one is cut to a little bit wider of a strip than the interior, like I mentioned. And then right sides together, I just folded them all together and sewed them together with a gathering stitch. Uh, then I tried pulling up the gathers and then turning it right side out. That doesn't work. Don't do that. You definitely have to turn it right side out and then pull up the gathers I think because I actually wound up losing like half of what I had done the thread snapped so yeah um don't do that part but I don't know it just looks kind of garbagey hmm I mean I think it is what I'm going for maybe it's just that the fabrics look like really white but like so is hers so I don't know, maybe I just need to do more of it <laughs> and just do the whole thing and get it over with and just go for it. Cause yeah, I think that is the right look. So I guess I will take that test piece apart and like put probably a couple of strips together cause these are not long enough and just do hope the whole thing and hope that that works. So my sewing room is currently an absolute disaster because after looking at that trim for a little bit, it just looked like such garbage. So I started pulling out basically every lace that I have that would be potentially a contender to gather up the lace instead and put that around the neckline and found out almost none of my laces were actually long enough to do that on the neckline and sleeves, except for 
this one right here. Now it's a little bit more like ecru than I was kind of thinking of and I might have to change the neckline fill plans a little bit because it is definitely a more ivory color than the fashion plate. However, I think it actually looks really nice with this fabric. I think it looks nicer than the bright white and I think it gives off the same sort of look even though all it is is tightly gathered lace and it's not like poofed up on both sides. So so yeah, I think this is the answer for the neckline. It just looks so much better than that other trim that looked like such garbage. And I have a ton of this. I mean, literally that. I think I got it at the bargain basement one year. I don't know if it was this year or a past costume college, but I have so much of it. So I have plenty to tightly gather it. I mean, this is really pretty tightly gathered here. And I have plenty of it for the neckline and for the cuffs. So I think that is the answer, which I will probably just whip stitch on is my thought uh, because I've already finished the edge. So it's not like I could put this in. And I also don't want to lose any more depth. All of the other trims that I was looking at were definitely wider, which I would have preferred this to be about a half inch wider. But I think if I just whip it onto the edge, I think that will be fine. Like I won't lose any of that extra width. And yeah, it looks nice i mean i think it looks right so now i just have to figure out the fill in the neckline possibly tea dyeing it a little bit to make it match this lace and then that will be good for the bodice so let's talk about the neckline fill in area right here i have the mock-up from the bodice and nothing from the mock-up changed with the neckline so this is the neckline minus the seam allowance right here this was like the actual cut line however this is what it would need to be this is the center front right here so this was just the overlap and this is what it would need to be to get up to the neck and in fact you can see at one point i added in a quarter inch more over here too so it's just a little bit closer even than this but what this means is I can actually cut this shape right here with that quarter inch added and then cut a little bit extra because again it does have to overlap so if we think about the fact that the bodice itself comes to about a half inch from there we want this to overlap at least one inch past that and you do need some to finish this too so probably it's going to go two inches or more past where this edge is right here and that's true for the side over here as well because you want some overlap now you can get away with maybe a little bit less overlap if you are like fully stitching this in on one side on that side you might not need quite as much overlap but i recommend to do like that two inches past just to be a little bit safer and of course this is going to be cut on the fold here so this is our center front fold so basically that is our basic shape there and then we're going to attach the collar I've decided to cut mine with a three inch overlap on all of the edges just in case but this is the basic shape that we're looking at here and basically the next thing would be to try this on make sure that I have the sufficient overlap and then honestly I'll probably cut out another one of these because one layer is just super super flimsy and then on top of this I'm planning to put this point de spree netting just kind of ruched on top I probably won't do too much much of it in the overlap part because I really don't need it there and I don't have that much width here and I want it to look a little bit ruched. Now that said this is currently white or just off white so what I'm actually going to do first is I'm going to go see if I can tea dye this just a little bit to get it just a little bit more ivory so that it matches better this color which is what matches the lace. I dipped this in a bowl of hot water with one English breakfast tea bag for just about a minute and a half or so so it around and it is now it seems the right color I did rinse it afterwards it's still wet though so this is gonna go hang to dry and we will continue more of the neckline bit later when a we can try it on and b this is dry and for now let's go over to the red swath along the bottom of the overskirt so first off let's talk scaling this right here is a half inch wide this is five eighths inch wide this is five inches from the waist to 
the drop. Mine is about 43-ish inches. It doesn't allow for any curvature, but I held up four inch wide ribbon in place of this and it looked way too narrow. I also held up five inch wide and it looked too wide. So we're gonna go with four and a half inches wide right here. Now we have to determine though, do we want it to be scalloped? Cause like if we look closely at this, it almost looks like there's a scallop along the edge. Of course it does also look like there's a rough edge around that edge, which I did not do. So I could do this scallop or I could turn in the edges. Either way, this bit right here is on the bias. So unfortunately, we do have to cut this on the bias. We cannot just rip a straight piece, which would make it so much easier. I think because everything else on here has such clean lines, I don't really want to add any curved bits for like scalloping it on here. So I think I'm going to cut it at five and a half inches wide and we are just going to fold over a half inch on each side. So although this is not a perfect solution, what I'm actually doing here to get the shape, I'm not doing a pure bias because although this is a curve and a bias would potentially get me there, I might as well use the curve, right? So I am actually using the hem of the overskirt piece. Even though this isn't gonna be set on the hem, it's gonna be set just up from the hem. I'm using the hem to cut out my shape. So you can see I'm drawing my line on here. Then I'm going to draw another line five and a half inches up from there. And that shape should get me pretty much what I need, even though it's going to be sitting up here as opposed to down here. Now, how I'm going to incorporate it into the pleated area up here, I do not know yet because I should have thought that through and, you know, didn't. It may very well be that I have to undo part of the waistband just so that I can like flatten this out and then incorporate it into the pleats. So that is a possibility, but this should at least work for the rest of the shape. This is now all pinned in place and I'm trying to decide if this is something I should hand sew or machine sew because I honestly don't know what's going to be more obvious. I could whip right along the edges with just a hand whip stitch. That's one option or I could do a little machine stitch right along the edge. I kind of think that the hand sewing is going to be better and I happen to be going to a craft day tomorrow so like that would be a good thing to bring with me for the hand sewing. So I think I'm going to put this aside and go back to the trim around the neckline. I've added a little organdy collar band to this right here. So this is just about two inches wide and then the seam allowance is folded in. You can see it through there. And let's go ahead and try this on to see if it works and hopefully not prick myself with all of the pins that are holding on the trim around the neckline right now. So I obviously don't quite have the bodice on yet, but the first thing that I'm noticing is that I actually made the band way too long. I meant for it to have a one inch overlap and you can see just how much overlap is back there. So I do have to reduce the length on that. However, I think the rest of this is going to be fairly decent. So let's go ahead and put the bodice on and see kind of what this looks like with the bodice on. So this is what it looks like with the bodice partially closed up here. And I think that this is going to work once I cut that extra tab off. I do have to see just how much overlap there is because I think that there's honestly a little bit too much right now, which is why it's getting kind of hung up and creating these wrinkles. It's also only one layer and it's actually going to be the two layers of cotton along with the point spray lace on top. So that's going to give it more structure, which is going to make it, you know, wrinkle less. Also with the point d'esprit, we're not going to see the wrinkling. And of course, it's going to be sewn in on one side. So all of that is going to help. Though I have to admit, it is almost tempting to make this like a separate dicky and not sew it in. So we'll see actually where I go with that because I feel like it would work just fine as a separate dicky. So what I'm probably going to do here is just mark where the edges of this get to. I don't think I want to mark it with the friction pen because I've noticed that with this fabric it's not erasing off all of the way and although this will be covered by the point d'esprit I just don't want to kind of risk with those marks on there so I'm probably just going to mark it by putting pins around the edges and seeing you know where those are and then making sure that it's even on both sides because I don't know if it's shifted at all for putting on the bodice but yeah I think that is the general idea there so I'll probably cut off any extra past about two inches and then otherwise I will put the point esprit on here like 
making some gathering at the top and at the bottom of the point of spray so that I can kind of ruche it across the bib neckline area. And then I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put the other piece of cotton right sides together, sew around the outsides here and turn it right side out. And then I can connect the collar. I think that's gonna be the best method here because that way I'll get finished edges all the way around the outside, not having to do any additional binding or anything like that. And the collar, I can finish that bit inside the two layers of the collar. So I'll try to show you more details as I proceed with that, but that is the plan at this moment. So with all of my hand sewing that I did yesterday, the whole band is now on the skirt. This bit right here did have to get picked out from the waistband, so I just have to put the waistband back in place in that area. You can see that the band actually winds up getting pleated into the waist just a little bit up there. And for the edge of the band, it just gets folded onto the back a little bit there and then stitched down in place. I did opt to do all of that by hand, as you can see, with just whip stitching along each edge after I pinned it. The bodice also has all of its lace applied around the neckline and also here around the cuff. I am wondering if this is going to require tacking up too. I wasn't sure how like gravity would do with this but I wanted it to mimic the direction of the lace on the neckline so that is why I had it go this way instead of like falling down that way so hopefully that will be good. We'll see if I wind up having to tack that or not. It's pretty stiff lace. And then I'm also working on the collar piece here. So right now everything is basted in place. I can actually take these pins out. I ran gathering stitches along the upper edge and or along the lower edge just on the machine, pulled up those gathers and then pinned along the outside. But I realized I actually needed a little bit more control here. If I had known that ahead of time, I could have run machine gathering stitches there. But instead, I actually just ran a hand gathering stitch along this shape kind of as I smoothed it out. I went and I gathered in and out. And again, now it's all basted in place. So that is this bit of it. This part's obviously going to get cut away now. And then for the collar, this is also now all basted in place. So this is the exterior part of the collar, which means that this is organdy and then cotton sateen and then the point to spree and then there's also lace. This lace is going to wind up facing upwards like that just along the edge once that's turned in. So I've just machine basted along the whole outside of that. Same with the interior side which is just the cotton sateen and organdy, cotton organdy. And so these are now going to be put right sides together and sewn along the outside edges here. And then that's going to be turned right side out after I clip the corners. And then I can sew this part to this part and just kind of for the interior part once that's down I can press the fold in and then sew it on the other side so this gets encased in that area. But before I can add this to this I am actually going to take this piece which is the interior piece to the collar and I'm going to sew around the outsides here and do that right sides together and turn that right sides out as well. So now that they have the backing pieces on, this is what the collar piece looks like here. I am a little bit worried about how stiff this is going to feel against my neck, but I thought it looked really nice. And then this is what the bib part looks like here with the backing in there. It's like a giant pita pocket kind of. So now I'm going to match my centers here, do right sides together and attach those together. This has the band that's going to go off like that, Ooh, which I probably shouldn't have turned this all the way right side out because I am actually going to want that to be like folded in right sides together. I might wind up top stitching the bottom part of that band. That's fine because it's behind my neck. No one's going to see it. But yeah, then the rest of it will get folded up and then stitched down by like stitching in the ditch. I actually decided to go ahead and after I attached these two together, I have turned this back inside out and sewed it this way and then turning it right side out winds up looking like that. So now I'm going to press this bit up here and stitch that down in the ditch. Okay, so actually I've decided that I am going to sew this by hand because I think it's just going to be neater. That is what the inside of it looks like right now pinned in. This is what the outside of it looks like. And I think once I sew it by hand, I might go ahead and try it on and see if it is something, oh, once I sew it by hand and once I add the hooks and bars on the back here. But I'm going to see if it's something that actually does need to be stitched into the bodice 
or if it can just be its own separate piece and be worn underneath the bodice like this because I don't know if it's going to slip or if it's going to get like off center or anything like that if I wear it without stitching it in in some way. driven for 20 minutes to go to a photo shoot as the light is quickly fading because it sets by 4 30 if not earlier here and then you get to that photo shoot and realize that you have forgotten the little device that holds your phone to the tripod just me yeah that's what just happened um luckily I had a tape measure in my purse, like a retractable tape measure in my purse, and I used that to tie my phone to the front of my camera and like jerry-rig up a tripod situation that actually would still work for my phone. So hopefully the pictures that I got were good. To be honest, I have not even looked at this in a mirror yet. I got dressed by doing like a get dressed with me video which will pop up on Instagram if it has not already and didn't look in the mirror through everything in the car because I knew the light was fading and went over to Stadium High School which is what you just saw. That is actually a high school and you may recognize that high school if you have ever seen the movie 10 Things I Hate About You because that is the high school in that movie. It was built originally I think with the intention of being a hotel. I believe it's from the 1890s so slightly anachronistic but still pretty close and then it did not turn into a hotel it turned into a high school instead. So I'll bet it was very cool to go to school there but I thought that that would make a pretty cool backdrop for this costume. So let's talk about this costume. Overall, I would say I am quite happy with this costume and I'm definitely very happy to be done with this. For what it is, it took just way, way, way too long. It should not have taken that long, but of course the holidays and life and everything did get in the way of actually finishing this in a timely manner. That said, I think it's really pretty. Like I'm very excited to wear this to the Victorian Festival and probably to Costume College as well is my thought. So we'll see. Uh, now that said, I have realized, or I realized well, as I was putting this on and getting ready to leave, that there are a couple of things that do you need a couple more tweaks and they were things that I thought maybe I could get away with basically and I couldn't so the two things that need to be done to this is that the part where the hooks are on the sash here it just needs to be tacked so that the hooks basically are the end points and it folds back on itself right now they're safety pinned because as I was putting it on it didn't stay closed into the bars because basically it went like this instead of staying like this so it just needs to be tacked together right here so the hook right here can stay in those bars so very very quick fix on that I can probably even do it on the sofa machine. The other thing that I was hoping maybe I could get away with and realized I just moved too much 
for that to be a possibility is that the bib part does actually need to be sewn in. It's literally pinned in with straight pins right now. I put one straight pin here and one straight pin over here and that was how I kept it in place for taking the pictures. So what I'm going to do is one side, I think this side is going to get sewn in. I'm just going to whip stitch it in place to the bodice and then this side over here is going to get I think probably bars on the bib part and hooks on the bodice so that it can hook in and that way it will stay in place over there as well. And same with probably down here. Though actually I haven't worried at all about the bottom part. So maybe I'll stitch it in over here but not need any hooks here. Really just even with this one place right here, it's doing pretty well, but I'll probably put a hook up here as well, maybe down here. So yeah, I think that will help everything with that. I never did wind up putting the padding in over here. And I mean, I am getting a little bit of a wrinkle, but I don't think it's enough to bother me to make me want to put padding in. I am wearing a corset cover today. And then of course the bib is in here too. So it does help with the line of the corset for sure. And so I don't think the padding is actually necessary. So really those are the only two tweaks I need to make, just the tacks on here and then the stitching in here and hooks and bars here for the collar. But everything else I think went together really well. I probably will do a better hat for the Victorian festival, but that old red bonnet that you saw in the pictures, I made that ages ago. I want to say 2015, I think, before I knew about doubling buckram. And it's actually meant to be an 1850s style bonnet. And the amount of times now that I've worn it as a bustle hat, just like turned forwards and with the back all kind of pinned up and together, it seems like it kind of works. So I guess I'll let you be the judge of that. But it was a close enough color match that I figured, yeah, it'll work for those pictures. So yeah, everything else though, I do really like this. I did realize I can't tell at all what the back of this bustle is doing. So I literally, like I can't see it in the mirror. I can't see it in the monitor. I have no idea like what the bows were looking like. And I won't know until I go to edit all of that footage what it was doing. Hopefully it was okay. <laughs> because uh, yeah, that's gonna just have to be something that like whoever I'm with, if it gets all out of whack, and they're gonna have to fix it because I can't even feel like what part is what part that's a tail oh see now the sash came has come undone but yeah I just I can't I can't tell where the tail bits are versus like the shorter parts but overall again I am very pleased with this I think it's lovely it's very comfortable too, which is wonderful. And I know that I will get a lot of wear out of this for various Victorian events, but I am so glad it's done. So thank you so much for sticking with me through all of this project. I know it has gone on for quite a while. If for some reason you have watched this video and you haven't seen the rest of them, that playlist is again linked down below in the description so you can catch the rest of the making of this outfit. But I'm very excited to bring you a completely new project next week and hopefully you will be excited to see that as well. If you like this video though, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional content out on Saturdays but I post every day over on my Instagram so please go follow me on Instagram that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions and if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube below the video. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons Jean, Janelle, and Dan. Thank you all so so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!